Hey everyone, this is Dr. Kazi and in this video, we are going to learn about what are the characters of signal transduction and what is the relationship between dose and response. First of all, what is signal transduction? Signal transduction in very simple and easy word is defined as the transmission of molecular signal or the molecular signal from the cell exterior to the cell interior. Have a look at this diagram. The signal is being transmitted from the cell exterior or outside of the cell to the interior by using signaling molecule and the receptor. Signaling molecule can be a hormone or a drug. When this signaling molecule, red color signaling molecule binds with this blue color receptor, conformational changes occur. The signal is transmitted from the outside to the inside. Now, there are two major characters or the properties of the signal transduction. One is the signal amplification and the other is desensitization. Let's discuss about the signal amplification first. As the name suggests, signal is being amplified. The duration and the intensity of the signal is increased by manifold. Have a look how this occurs. When the agonist, one agonist, bind with this blue color receptor, which can be G protein link receptor or the enzyme link receptor. The agonist, one agonist is binding with this blue color receptor. This will activate 100 cyclic AMP. One receptor is activating 100 cyclic AMP. One cyclic AMP will then further activate 100 CAMP dependent protein kinase, which will phosphorylate three enzyme. One CAMP dependent protein kinase is phosphorylating three enzyme or activating three enzyme. In total, 10,000 enzymes are activated. Remember, only one agonist is binded with the receptor, which results in the activation of 10,000 enzyme. Now, these 10,000 enzyme will produce 1 million product. The enzyme will bind with the substrate and produce 1 million biological product. One agonist bind with the receptor pro to produce 1 million biological product. This is what signal amplification is. Signal intensity and the duration is increased by million folds. Let's discuss it with, an, with the help of another example. Albuterol is a drug. It binds with the receptor. The binding of this drug albuterol with the receptor it persists for only one millisecond but the g protein which are activated as the result of the albuterol binding with the receptor this g protein will persist for 100 millisecond this phenomena is known as tachyphylaxis because a lot of receptors are spared only the fraction of receptors are needed because the binding with the receptor persists for only one millisecond, it detaches, but the G protein or the enzyme link receptors which are activated at the result of this binding persists for 100 millisecond. It persists for a longer time. So a lot of receptors are spare. This phenomena is known as the spare receptor or the tachyphylaxis. Now some organ in our body they have 90% receptor occupied. Have a look at this beautiful diagram, your heart. Only 5 to 10% of the beta adrenoceptors are spare. 90 to 95% of the beta adrenoceptors are occupied with a hormone or with a drug. So this organ has a little functional reserve. On the other hand, the insulin receptors are 99% spare. Only one insulin bind with the receptor to produce millions of products. Now, why this phenomena signal amplification is important? To increase the efficacy and the effectiveness of the cell and the phenomena of tachyphylaxis or the spare receptor. Now, desensitization. When the agonist bind with the receptor continuously, again and again, the agonist we are administering the agonist or the drug which is binding with this blue color again and again. This will change the responsiveness of this receptor or decrease the 
response of this receptor to this agonist. Now, this occur by phosphorylation, internalization of the receptor, degradation or the recycling. Have a look how this occurs. The receptors can be internalized. When no receptor is present on the surface, the agonist cannot bind with the receptor. So the response to the agonist or the drug is decreased because all of the receptors are internalized. Now, this internalized receptor will produce an endosome which can be degraded when it binds with the lysosome which has a degradative enzyme they will kill or destroy this endosome containing receptor on the other hand when we need receptors on the surface this endosome can be recycled back to the surface Opposite to this desensitization, we have upregulation phenomena. Upregulation means the response of the receptor is increased. The response of the organ to the agonist is increased because the receptors are being restored. Repeated exposure to the agonist, if we are repeatedly exposing the receptor to the agonist, remember two terms, agonist and the antagonist. Agonist will activate the receptor on the other hand the antagonist will deactivate the receptor if we repeatedly expose the receptor to the agonist the receptors are recycled back to the surface they are restored now for agonist which activates the receptor if the phenomena of restoration occur it will increase the sensitivity of the cell on the other hand for antagonist which binds with the receptor and deactivates it if the receptors are restored with the help of the endosome the drug becomes resistance so two terms you have to remember now I want you to understand about the dose response relationship have a look the agonist mimic the action of endogenous ligand in other words the isoproteinol is a drug which mimic the action of norepinephrine isoproteinol mimics the action of norepinephrine when the isoproteinol bind with the beta receptor present in your heart it will produce the response now on x-axis you take drug dose on y-axis you take the response of the drug I want you to understand how the receptors are occupied and what will happen if all of the receptors are occupied whether it will produce the response or not so you take the drug dose on x-axis and on y-axis you have the response as soon as you inject the drug the dose start to increase with the passage of time it increases and response is also increasing because the receptors are being occupied with the drug or the agonist at this point all of the receptors are occupied there is no spare receptor so we have the graph of a hyperbola now what happened when you repeatedly administered the drug over a short period of time and what happens when you take a break and after some time you again administer the drug whether this will increase the response of the cell or not have a look again you take the drug those on x-axis and on y-axis you have the response of the drug as soon as you start injecting the drug the concentration start to increase the dose start to increase and the response of the cell also increases until all of the receptors are occupied now you take one hour break or after one hour you again inject the drug the response of the cell decreases because all of the receptors are occupied on the other hand if you take a long break for example you again inject after one hour and the response was low if you take a break of say five hours or ten hours or longer breaks the response is high have a look because spare receptors release the drugs and we have some spare receptors in this case we don't have a lot of spare receptors all of the receptors are occupied when we have spare receptors the response is high when all of the receptors are occupied no spare receptor response is low so you need to inject 
the medication after a long time, not after the short time if you want to increase the response of the drug or the medication. This is all about the characters of signal transduction and those response relationship please do like share and subscribe and i will see you in the next video